I'm Grumpy No Friends and welcome back to my Geek Stuff channel. If it's the first time you've been to the channel, thank you for joining and I hope you can find something that will help you out. So today I'm going to show you five geek things that I do to make my life easier when I use my computer. So the first thing I like to do is change my folders so they're unique so I know what they are and I want to jump into. We can do a simple thing like this. So well, first of all, we'll create a new folder. So right click, click on new folder. So we can create a new folder or we could take an existing folder. We then right click on that folder and go down to properties. We go over to the customize and then we we'll change icons. So by default, in your C drive, Windows, System32, there's a file called shell32. Dot, and it's a DLL file, dynamic link library. Inside there, just this one file, you'll see all of your d default Windows icons. So as you can see across here, here's all your default icons that any kind of folders would look like. And as you can see, there's a whole load of them and this is all in one small folder or a small file. So you could pick any one of those icons if you wanted to change it to any of those icons at all. So we go right back to the beginning here. So if we want to put it as this, this icon, click OK, click Apply and click OK. So there is just a folder with that new icon. So now the folder has an icon that's unique to what you want to be called. And you can still rename it. And it's just a folder with a fancy icon. But that's the generic ones that come with the system. I want to make a custom one. Well, me being a geek, I've got in my documents a folder called icons and I have everything from little ghosts to all sorts of fancy icons, multicolored folders, all unique, all special that will stand out. I've even got ones that was a photograph of myself and my family. Um, and then I've converted those into a, into an icon. So all we do is if we want to select those ones, we just right click, go to properties, go to customize, go to change icons. But instead of going into that DLL file, we click on browse and we want to navigate to where those folders are. I've got in my documents and an icon. So if I wanted to pick, do a nice picture of a ghost, OK and apply and that folder becomes a ghost. What I do a lot of time is I have a bright colored folder. See, I know it. And if I just put G, because I know it's called generic, bright orange. So then that folder stands out. For my day-to-day -day use i've got the picture of the geek i've got one i've called um folder i've got the, the, the this one here this folder was actually from the program itself so this is just a shortcut to the folder but i've give this given the shortcut the icon of that actual program so there you can see how i change uh, my icons for my desktop to my shortcuts or my folders. I guess I better show you how you do it for a shortcut. So if I right click on the actual shortcut, I go to properties, click on change icon, and it will ask me to navigate to where it is. That's already where it is. So if this is in my de desktop, geek tools, temporary cleaner, so I select the exe file, so the execution file, the one that you actually run. So when you open it, any icons are inside there. So I can select zero, which is this one, 
one, and then it'll be two, three, four. So I can select any of those four icons which are inside that folder, inside that file itself. So I just chose for the main file. You can do this for games. You can do this for any programs. You can use certain tools and extract those specific icons. That's why I had it. That's how I made that collection. Or you can upload them to web pages now, and you can do it all online. So you don't actually need a special tool to, to download it. And then all you do is you click apply, and then that becomes uh, your icon for that folder or for that shortcut. The next geeky thing I'm going to show you is this icon here. What it is is a one click shutdown of your operating system. So instead of going into your start menu, going into power, clicking on shutdown, I literally just one click and it will shut the program down. Now, there's one thing that could be an issue is with it being so close to my start menu or my Explorer, if you're in a rush doing this, you can accidentally click it and shut down your operating system. I've only done this in the last seven or eight years. I've only done this maybe two or three times just because I was rushing and getting things done. If you wanted to make it a two click, just put it somewhere on your desktop and then it would just be double click to run it. Now, how do we make this? So we already showed you how to make an icon and that's the icon I put. What we do is we do the right click and click on new and click on shortcut because it's actually just a shortcut. Now we have to find out where it actually lives. This actually lives in your system 32 folder. So we have to browse to that location and find the shutdown.exe file that lives in your system 32. That's exactly what your system shuts down each time with. So under this PC, into your C drive or your main drive, Windows, System32 folder. Now we have to look for the shutdown.exe file. So it's under the S's. There we go, shut down. And then we click OK. Shut down there, click next. Call it shutdown, just by generic. So there it is. This is a shortcut done to this. However, this will work, but there's a few more tweaks that we need to do to make it go there. So if we go to properties, so this is gonna be shut down, the shut down the system, but also see Windows system 32 is where that. Yeah, what we want to do is we want to add a few more parameters to shut it down straight away and do it silently. So we click space backslash S to make it go in the silent mode. Space backslash T space zero zero. What that is is S means silently do it. So don't give us any prompts, don't allow us to click any buttons or anything like that to make it work. And then T is the time interval. So you can set a delay for when you click it to so many milliseconds before it will shut down. So if you add 30 or 30 milliseconds before the system will shut down, I've got, I'm saying it here to shut down immediately and then click apply and then click OK. But me being a geek, having that icon, doesn't look cool so i'm just going to go to the right click like we did before with the icons go to properties go to change the icon select the power button and there's a shot you know shortcut uh, so here if we leave it on the desktop we'd have to double click on it to make it run if it's on my taskbar then it's just a one click. So if I just double click on it, it will now shut down my computer. It's going to shut it down the same way as it would do a normal thing, do a logical shutdown and it will save your files as a normal shutdown would do. So if you accidentally click it by mistake, your system's all going to shut down and then you've got to reboot your system up. But that's a simple one click. And all you do is if you just drag it down onto your, your taskbar, that's how you get it onto your taskbar. 
and then uh, this will be just a one click to shut the system down. The next geeky thing I'm going to show you is creating a simple batch file but we'll create a shortcut to that batch file to run it so we can change its icon and then what that batch file will do is we'll kill all the running process this is in the background that is slowing your computer down I use this for when I'm playing games so I kill all unnecessary programs I don't need to be running when I'm playing games to free up memory and free up space you know while I'm uh, while I'm playing gaming you know, or doing a lot of processing so that I uh, have as much memory as I can and then it's just not unnecessary things running in the background. So one of the first things we want to do is we want to press Control, Shift and Escape to open up Task Manager and then look under the top left here under Processes. So these are all the processes that are running in the background. Let me just make this a bit, a bit bigger so we can see it a bit more. So for instance, Microsoft Edge is I don't see it here running as a something I started, but it's running in the background. Well, what we only do is if you right click onto it and say open file location, this is the file that is running in the background. But what's its file extension? Most of them are going to be .exe executable. If we want to see and verify it, we click on view, file name extensions, sure enough Microsoft Edge docs it exe okay so what we'll do is we'll create ourselves a, ba uh, a batch file a batch file is just simply a text document with the file extension dot bat for batch instead of txt for text so we can click on new text document I'm just going to call it Kill process to play game. By default, it's going to be as text. So, all right, for now, we can just leave it like this and we'll open it up. Now, we need to put some parameters and things inside here to tell it to kill that specific process. Now, what processes do we have, or what are the switches that we're looking for? So, first of all, we have to type in at echo off. What this tells it is don't display it on the screen, but if you've got lots of information, you will see some of it in the black screen. Usually it will just flash up quickly and then it will disappear depending on how much or what processes it has to kill. We'll leave a couple of spaces and then we have to type the kill command. Task kill forward slash F. The slash F indicates to forcefully terminate the process so now we have to say space forward slash im and im stands for image name basically what the process is called and then we have to do space and name of the process that we want to kill so if we go back into here we go right click again open file location the way i do it is i right click rename Highlight everything, copy, click out of it, go back to my text document and paste the file name inside there. And we do space again, forward slash T. What the T stands for is to terminate the file, the process and all its child processes or any other processes underneath it. So task kill slash f to force it to kill it im to to find the process and then slash t to terminate so basically force it find it and terminate it so we'll do this just the first one first example so then we want to go file save as and instead of dot txt we want to call it dot bat for batch i'm just going to go on my desktop So let me just, so here's the kill, kill the processes. If we right click, as you can see, is the process, as you can see, is dot bat as the file extension. If we can right click and click on edit, we'll see our file here. 
So what I'm going to do is just double left click on it. You see it quickly flashed up. Now let's see did it kill Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge has now gone for many of the running processes that were in the background. That's just one file um, that you can do. it. What I usually then do is if you right click, edit, what I usually do is I copy the whole lot, control C to copy, go to the next line, control V to paste, and then all I do is find my next process, delete this part, find the next process, control shift and escape to bring up task manager again. Right click, if we don't see the open file location, it means there's there's child like so the, so Chrome here's got like five or six. So open file location. Right click. Rename. Copy. Right click. Edit. file and this time we just need to do save because we're going to save over top of the um, original file. So here's our original text file that we created is which is completely empty. That can be deleted. Now we like if we click on edit you'll see the two that we've got inside. Double click flash to, to see what there's control shift and escape. We don't have Chrome running and we don't have edge running anymore. Here's an example of the batch file I have that's running on my computer to kill all the process when I play games. This is what I have within mine so it kills 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 21 21 different files from running and what it does is down the bottom here on my system tray all the ones down here disappear and anything in the background that's running and all i do is i simply just double left click and as you can see it kills all those processes was done in now we can go back in and change the view to hide the file extensions again so we don't see the word bat now this is actually all the batch file, so this is the file. So what I usually do is I store this somewhere. So if I just cut this and I'll just put it in my downloads folder. And then what I want to do is I want to right click on it and say send to desktop. Create a shortcut. So now we have a shortcut on our desktop. Get rid of the word shortcut. But now I can change the properties, change the icon, make my fancy icon, So now, anytime I want to start playing the game, just double click on it. It'll kill all the processes. Everything down the bottom will disappear, freeze up the resources, and now I can play the game with a, um, a better speed. So if you ever wanted just a simple double click on your desktop to an icon, and it'll open your web pages that you go to on a daily basis, well, if the answer is yes, I'll show you how you do this. We've already covered how to make a batch file. Here's, the, here's one I've made earlier, and this is the information we put inside. So we do the usual echo off. We click on, we type the word start, and then we type in the URL of the website that you want to go to. And you do it as many times to as many files as you want to open up. Now we just double click on the batch file. It will open up your default web browser to the websites that you typed in. So here's a Kaspersky website that I go to where the latest threats uh, around the world. So here's all uh, ones that are in Russia that are happening right now. 
and there's a weird and wonderful geeky stuff that you can do on here and check things further out. Or you can go to my channel and just check out all the videos that I've got on my channel. You never know what you're going to find and something that may interest you. And you're not a real geek unless you go to Virus Total. Here you can upload any files you think could be suspicious or you're not quite sure of. Drop them onto the thumbnail or even to choose the file and 70 malware or antivirus software will actually uh, scan it and tell you results of what the file is, where it comes from, what program it belongs to and a whole load of geeky information and if it's malicious. And I keep going to Sordom just to check out the latest little tweaks and tools that they make. And if you're looking for education, you can go to Udemy. There's free courses or there's paid courses in the various times of the year. There's actually discounted courses. Great place to get a bit, get an education for free. And here's where I go for streaming movies or I can uh, download it. Or to your socials, Facebook, X, Instagram, or even to TikTok. They're just a few examples of websites you can go to you can just put as many as you want or as little as you want if you want to just jump straight to those uh, websites with just a one click and like we've done before save your file into your my documents send it to desktop as a shortcut change your icon and make it make it your unique thing so you know to double click and take you where to to the web pages you usually go to my final geeky thing for today and for this video is how to make a shortcut to the web page that you want to go to. So we open up your browser, navigate to a web page. So go to my web page or any web page you want to. Now, how do I create a shortcut to this web page and then save it to my desktop? Well, it's simple. Click on the minimize, not the minimize, the like shrink down. Where your URL is, go all the way to the left to these dotted lines. Press your left mouse button and hold it down and drag it to your desktop. Now you've created a shortcut to that web page. This will work with all of your web pages. And then you can maximize your browser again. Now you have a shortcut to that web page. I do this as if I find a web page and I'm interested in it, but I'm, I'm too busy doing things and I don't want to read it just now, or I'll go back to there and check it out further. Instead of bookmarking it and saving the file, I'll just drag it. Or with me doing gaming, there's cheats, tricks, maps, and things like that. I drag it there so then I can just double click on it and then just go straight to that page when I uh, when I need the information. I'm Grumpy No Friends. If you found this helpful, please check out my channel, GNF Geek Stuff, and consider liking and subscribing.